Going to war is nothing to joke about. This is where the saying kill or be killed takes its literal form. One would want to have the best weapon that will eliminate the enemy in a split second. Desmond Dawes decided that the best weapon he could have was his faith and conscience. Committed to non-violence, the unique soldier held particular strong views against killing and refused to carry a weapon to war. He went from being resented by his superiors and threatened by his fellow soldiers to saving lives and becoming the man who will win a medal of honor without firing a single shot. This is the story of Desmond Dawes. World War II the largest war in history. This war started in the 1930s and as it was dying down, over 70,000 men were designated conscientious objectors. These are people mostly with religious beliefs against bearing arms or military services of any kind. Some of these men joined the US armed forces and served in non-combat roles such as medics and chaplains. Desmond Doss was one of them. As he snubbed the title of a pacifist, he considered himself as a conscientious cooperator. Dawes was born in 1919 to William Thomas Dawes, a carpenter and a World War I veteran. His mother, Bertha Dawes, was a committed religious woman. Desmond was raised as a seven-day Adventist along with his older sister, Audrey, and younger brother, Harold. Desmond attended the Park Avenue Seventh-day Adventist Church School after he completed the eighth grade. Desmond was very involved in the Adventist Church and he naturally accepted vegetarianism. He made it a point to live his life in line with his religion. This included a strong commitment to nonviolence. Desmond's mother embedded these values in her children. As a result of fighting in the First World War, his father became an alcoholic and suffered from depression throughout his life. This strengthened Desmond's commitments to pacifism and after a violent incident between his father and his uncle, in which young Desmond had to wrestle a gun out of his father's hands, he swore to never again lay his hands on a weapon. He also read in the Bible about Cain and Abel, the brother who killed his own brother out of jealousy. And this is where his beliefs of nonviolence was rooted. When the United States entered the World War II, Doss was working at the Newport News Naval Shipyard. His job was important to the war efforts, and in 1942, Doss could have easily applied for a deferment. And many would have expected such from someone who refused to bear arms against another. Desmond, however, felt this was his calling to serve his country and help his fellow men. He just couldn't stay at home while his fellow countrymen were risking their lives, and this included his younger brother, Harold, who was serving with the U.S. Navy on board the USS Lindsay. After the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, Desmond enlisted in the army. He believed the war was just and desired to do his part, but for him, that meant saving lives and not taking them. Desmond reported to Fort Jackson in South Carolina for training. Dawes was required to undergo the usual basic training in spite of his status. He realized immediately that his commitment to nonviolence and faith is going to be seriously tested in the army. Since Dawes did not want to approach the war with violence, he refused to touch a gun in training. He thought being an army medic would give him a pass on gun training. He couldn't have been any more wrong. Yet, he was allowed to forgo weapons training and even received a pass to attend church on Saturdays. Seventh-day Adventists observe the Sabbath from Friday evening until Saturday. During this time, they avoid labor and use the time to focus on their relationship with God. This meant Doss was not going to participate in any other work duties on those days. Because of this, his fellow soldiers were suspicious of him and resentments grew in the training camp against Desmond. 
Because he refused to carry a gun, they didn't feel that they could count on him to protect them in battle. His commanding officers considered him a liability and attempted to remove the young man they felt was a coward and a detriment to the units from the army. They tried to have him discharged for mental illness and even had him court-martialed for refusing to hold a rifle. All attempts to remove Dawes from the army was unsuccessful. He was bullied and beat up by fellow soldiers. One soldier even warned him and said, quote, When we go to battle, I will make sure you don't come back alive. Dawes will not give in to the bullying. He will slowly begin to build trust with his fellow soldiers. The 26-year-old Desmond Dawes was shipped off to the Pacific as a medic with the 77th Division and the 307th Infantry Division. Even though Doss will become famous for his actions in the Battle of Okinawa, it wasn't his first. In the summer of 1944, Desmond first served on the island of Guam. Doss was brave and treated wounded men under fire during the fighting in Guam. This earned him a Bronze Star for Valor Award. After Guam, the 307th fought in the Battle of Leyte in the Philippines. That ran from October 17th to December 26th, 1944. This is where Desmond's friend, Glenn, a fellow medic, was hit and died on his way to the aid station. Doss was heartbroken but still embodied courage and bravery in combat and was awarded a second bronze star. By this time, the men who had threatened to kill Doss at training camp quickly realized the value of their faith-driven, non-violent medic. Doss had not fired a shot in battle so far and had already won two awards. By the time Desmond and his units stepped foot on Okinawa, any reservations his fellow soldiers had about him had turned to respect. They were now certain that Doss was there to save them and not himself, and will risk his own life saving others. By the spring of 1945, the Germans were close to surrendering in Europe, but in the Pacific, the Japanese were fighting to the last man. Desmond and his units were redeployed to Okinawa on April 29, 1945. The battleground was the Mida escapement known as Hacksaw Ridge, a 400-foot sheer rock face. The Americans had already spent a month trying to capture the escapement, but the Japanese had spent years entrenching their soldiers and creating a maze of tunnels in the hill. The terrain on top of the cliff was precarious and filled with holes that the Japanese had dug in waiting for the attack. Time after time, as the Americans tried to take the ridge, they faced what the Japanese called a rain of steel. Bullets were literally flying in the air. As A Company were nearly obliterated in taking the escapement, B Company, of which Doss was part, climbed cargo nets to the top of the cliff on May 2, 1945. For days, the soldiers fought against deeply ingrained Japanese forces. The Japanese were fierce with their machine gun fire and one GI was decapitated. Unarmed doors treated the wounded under enemy fire. He decided to take off any markings that showed he was a medic, as Japanese forces were specifically targeting medics. They knew taking out one medic would result in the loss of more GIs who would have no one to help them. Over the next few days, Dawes continually put himself in mortal danger to aid his fallen comrades, as he fearlessly rushed into harm's way to save the very men who had once threatened his own life. The days were quickly passing by. On May 5, 1945, after days of brutal rain of steel, Dawes was the only medic available to go over the top with the infantry men. The Japanese hid in the holes and caves and launched an intense cover attack as soon as the Americans attempted once again to secure the top of the ridge. The battle intensified to the point that all men were ordered to retreat, but Dawes refused. Less than a third of the men made it back to the bottom of the cliff. More than 100 men were left wounded and lying on enemy soil. He would not leave them behind. Desmond turned around and ran back into the side of an injured soldier under enemy fire. He quickly treated the man's injuries in plain view of the enemy before dragging the man to the edge of the cliff face and lowering him to safety with a rope. Desmond could have stopped there and still been considered a hero, but his conscience wouldn't let him. Saving lives was his calling and this was the time to do it. He decided to save as many men as he could. The Japanese were on the hunt for the sleek medic and were finishing off the injured American soldiers. 
Dor stayed on top of the ridge for hours, running back and forth into the chaos again and again to treat the wounded and drag them to safety. After each man was lowered to safety, he said a little prayer to himself to keep him going. Lord, please help me get one more. The Lord answered his prayer and Desmond saved an estimate of 75 injured soldiers. Desmond saved these men on the Sabbath day. His day of rest did not set him back and he sure wasn't a liability. A few days later, he went along on a night raid and was hiding in a shell hole when a Japanese grenade landed at his feet. The explosion sent him flying through the air and his hip and leg were shredded. Blood poured out from the impact of the 17 pieces of shrapnel in his body, but this wasn't enough to take down the hero. Desmond treated his own wound in the field and waited for five hours before rescue arrived. The rescuers were however attacked and one of these rescuers were wounded. Desmond crawled off the stretcher he was being carried on and insisted that the other wounded man take his place. He then attempted to make his way to safety on foot, but his arm was shattered by sniper bullets and suffered a compound fracture to his arm. With one remaining good limb, Dawes dragged himself to safety. He had been missing for so many hours and had been presumed dead at camp. The news had even been reported on the front page of his hometown newspaper and he had to write a letter to his mother to set things straight. Desmond was removed from Okinawa on 21st May 1945. He arrived in the US in October after months of receiving treatments for his injuries. That same month, he received the prestigious Medal of Honor from President Harry Truman on the lawn of the White House in recognition of his incredible bravery in the Battle of Okinawa. The President couldn't be more proud. You really deserve this. I consider this a greater honor than being a president, says Truman. Fifteen heroes decorated by President Truman with a Congressional Medal of Honor. Then the conscientious objector hero, Corporal Desmond Doss, refused to fight, refused to kill. A medical corpsman, he displayed self-sacrificing valor in the care of the wounded. Now he receives the nation's highest military decoration and explains his view as a conscientious objector. I thank God for letting me do my part in this war and saving the lives of my fellow men. Desmond was humble about his award and gave the credit to God, who he believed saved his life many times during the war, so that he could keep doing the righteous work he was doing in battle. Desmond may have finished serving his country, but his personal battle was just about to start. He recovered from the injuries he received at war, but his left arm sustained permanent damage. In 1946, he was diagnosed with tuberculosis, which he had contracted in the Philippines. It took more than five years of treatment before he could be released from the hospital in 1951. He was considered 90% disabled by the military because he had lost one lung and five ribs during the course of his treatment. But he became 100% disabled in 1976, after an overdose of antibiotics left him completely deaf. But thankfully, he was able to regain his earring with the cochlear implant in 1988. After the war, the plan for Desmond was to return to his carpentry career, but his injuries and lingering health issues were not going to allow him to work. Instead, he bought a small farm in Georgia and with the help of his wife, Dorothy, whom he got married to in 1942 before deploying to battle, raised their son, Desmond Jr. Desmond also worked extensively with his church until his death in 2006 at the age of 87. After his death, his story still lives on. Numerous books and movies have been made about his life. One of the movies that I can guarantee you will love is The Hacksaw Ridge directed by Mel Gibson and starring Andrew Garfield. This movie is so good and it shows how Dawes was a living example of his faith. This man had the purest of hearts and I truly hope he's enjoying in heaven like the angel he truly is. May his soul rest in perfect peace. For more amazing videos like this, please subscribe and kindly check out this video about the miracle on the Hudson. Kindly leave your thoughts in the comments and please don't forget to like this video for more people to see it. As always, take care of yourselves and each other. Goodbye.